On April 14, 1865, John Wilkes Booth shot President Lincoln at point-blank range during a performance of Our American Cousin at Ford's Theater. Saturday, April 15th at 7.22 in the morning, President Lincoln was dead. A nation was plunged into mourning, and a city would have to prepare for the biggest funeral it had ever seen. After Lincoln's death at his state funeral in Washington, it was determined by Mary Todd Lincoln that he should be buried in his hometown of Springfield, Illinois. The route that he had followed from Springfield to Washington was now going to be recreated as the route of his funeral train from Washington back to Springfield. One of the stops would obviously be Philadelphia. From its first stop in Baltimore, the train headed north to Harrisburg. And as it did all along the train tracks, people, crowds of people, spontaneously gathered, stood silently. From there, the funeral train headed 106 miles east towards Philadelphia. At 4.30 p.m., on the afternoon of Saturday, April 22, 1865, one week after Lincoln's murder, the funeral train arrived in Philadelphia at the Baltimore Depot at Broad in Washington. 30,000 Philadelphians had gathered there. It was met by a great hearse that had been prepared by the city of Philadelphia. The hearse bore Lincoln's casket through the city there was a parade of citizens, soldiers, all of them conveying Lincoln's casket to Independence Hall. And there Lincoln lay in state for two days beneath a statue of George Washington. Not since the passing of President Washington had there been such an outpouring of mournful respect in Philadelphia nor would there likely be again. In its extraordinary grief, the city was united. 300,000 people came to pay their respects at Independence Hall. Now bear in mind, that's 300,000 people in 1865. That meant that almost the entire city of Philadelphia was getting emptied out. There were double lines that went all the way from Independence Hall, strung across to the Schuylkill River. The Philadelphia Inquirer's Monday headlines attempted to capture events and emotions from the weekend. The paper wrote, Universal grief was depicted on the faces of all. The feeling was too deep for expression. But what was remarkable for was the silence that pervaded the city. All that you could really hear as Lincoln's body lay in state, all through the city you could hear just the tolling of bells and the reports of cannon, saluting cannon in the distance, firing their melancholy salutes in honor of Abraham Lincoln. A young African-American woman, Emily Davis, made her way into the hall to pay her respects. In a pocket diary, she recorded her experience. Saturday, April 22nd, 1865. I went out about three in the afternoon it was the grandest funeral I ever saw. The coffin and hearse was beautiful. On Monday, April 24th at 1 a.m., after resting in Independence Hall for more than 30 hours, the dust that had accumulated on the dead president's face was wiped away. His coffin was closed. At three in the morning, the mournful cortege would leave from Kensington Station. From there, the train would make several stops in cities also important to Lincoln on its way back home to Springfield, where on the 4th of May, 1865, President Lincoln was buried. The funeral, though, here in Philadelphia was one of the most remarkable events in that whole long, sad funeral train bearing Lincoln back home to Illinois. 
Lincoln's last visit would leave an indelible mark on Philadelphia. Just as he had rallied Philadelphia to support the Union, often in the face of powerful Confederate sympathies, his death now galvanized the city's sense of itself with a clear purpose, supportive of the cause of one nation under God and grieving for the man who gave his own life for that cause.